going to meet one of the most talented personality in a special show the officer we are being experiencing the effect of corona virus for last two years somehow the other we have managed to come across the various corona warriors that are existing and doing for the society's benefit but still few of them work only behind the curtains their work in the administration the field work haven't been showcased yet today we are going to meet one of the most influential vibrant personality in administration who has handled the situation with a positive attitude z patiently and devotion 24 by 7 his both his parents have served top brass government officials as well as he himself is a former reporter during covid crisis he was top of the town and his name has even mentioned nationwide because of his efforts of domestic violence cases that had raised in pandemic crisis and let's know from him what he had made a difference using this particular a small efforts taken by him into reaching nationwide an engineer by profession as well as a bureaucrat let's hear his journey and let's welcome him none another than this i'm talking about is ayush prasad sir who is a chief executive officer of pune jilla parishad Let's welcome him. Sir, so welcome to our show. Thank you so much. Corona was a man-made or it was a natural disaster. Let's not get into it. But COVID was some situation which was unique for all together experience. Tackling people, tackling the issues, and you yourself is one of the Corona warriors who have worked on the field. I have seen not only handling the citizen but also for working for building up. war zones for them even for a transgender you have taken a lot of efforts so we would like to know about it uh, corona was a very unique experience in uh, handling covid crisis in pune uh, covid crisis in pune started one day after holi in 2020 that is around the 10th of march where the first uh, case was detected in the manjri village just in the outskirts of pune after that we have had almost uh, almost uh, what, i think 10 lakh cases in, in in the entire district and it was a massive challenge we had two waves and we are currently in uh, in, in the la- later stages of the third wave we have been working very hard uh, to basically manage covid while managing covid there was there were multiple challenges one because the last major epidemic was several generations ago there was no experience or institutional memory of an handling of an epidemic you had smaller uh, problems plus, uh, such as uh, uh, sars and mers but uh, this this covid crisis was unique in a way because of the global scale that it had affected um, we had to set up health infrastructure very very rapidly and uh, we were able to set up jumbo facilities new hospitals large ccc centers we had to train doctors recruit nurses ensure that uh, all all medicines are available oxygen is available at each bed and uh, ensure that public confidence and emergency services are available and all of these things and then preventive measures so things like use of masks social distancing and uh, and ensuring uh, sanitization of places and rules also as we discovered newer things newer medical techniques rules of managing covid also kept changing the medical procedures kept changing we kept evolving so administrative strategy had also had to evolve but i'm happy to note that in rural areas of pune we have remained stable with our action plan and strategy from 7th of september of 2020 and that has really helped us in saving a large number of lives sir two more questions related to some aspects so we would like to know about the domestic violence why it was a key element for you sir um my wife in fact mentioned to me that in france people women who are suffering from domestic violence are given coupons to stay in hotels so this was a problem that was being uh, spoken about uh, globally uh, our uh, home minister of maharashtra also gave a statement that uh, a police should would take action against those indulging in domestic violence so i initially asked uh, public representatives in zilla parishad our home officers if the cases of domestic violence had seen a rise in uh, pune district Uh, most of them reported in the negative that there is no cases of domestic violence per se. But I fo- I thought we should form social action groups. These are committees of Asha workers, Anganwadi sevikas, as well as uh, uh, elected representatives of the village, as well as uh, uh, some women who are active in the self help group. All of them visited home to home. They gathered social intelligence because people know that where there are cases of domestic violence. We identified 938 households. 
in the district where there are active uh, cases of domestic violence where in, in intervention is required these are regular cases of domestic violence so we, we did the, all sorts of interventions from social counseling uh, there were people who opposed our interventions also because they said that why are you interfering in our houses we remained uh, determined and uh, and we were able to tackle all of these cases give them necessary support our uh, women volunteers were available for them these uh, they provided strength to the women and ensured that preventive measures were taken with the help of the police, the district legal services authority, the women protection officers, we were also able to protect, uh, provide necessary legal and medical assistance as and when the cases demand. So now uh, we are in the third phase of wave that has been talked of the town at present, and still people are into the dilemma that what will happen next, and uh, still vaccination for now younger generations has started. So uh, in the rural area, how are you managing it? Rural areas have been doing uh, especially well in managing the third wave of COVID primarily because our doctors are trained, health infrastructure is in place, people are also taking necessary steps and we have had a program called COVID Free Village. So all of these are really helping in managing the third wave. With regard to vaccination, Pune district has uh, vaccinated over 100% of our population because a large number of migrants have gotten vaccinated in Pune. Uh, we, uh, on a single day, there's a national record was set in Pune of 2.58 lakh people being vaccinated on a single day thanks to the support of the CSR from Bajaj. We were also able to ensure that uh, vaccination uh, a percentage has reached every strata of the society. Almost all households are fully vaccinated. Only 16,000 people in the district have refused to take vaccination amongst the eligible population. We have met each of them five times, counseled them, but they have uh, refused for various reasons. Some of health, some of beliefs, some of uh, uh, some other uh, uh, preconceived notions. So all necessary steps have been taken and uh, we have ensured that because of good vaccination, proper physical distancing, use of masks and uh, proper awareness and proper health infrastructure, we have managed to ensure that uh, the number of cases in rural areas of Pune in the third wave remains extremely low. As CEO of Pune Zilla Parishad, it's a huge area altogether, 13 talukas which means more than 1300 plus uh, village units are set up, panchayats, gram panchayats are there and handling Punekar is one of the most toughest tasks. How do you manage them as an officer? The biggest challenge that a Punekar brings us is intellect. You know, they are very intellectual, very thoughtful. Any decision is taken is analyzed, micro-analyzed, scrutinized and any mistake that is made is obviously brought to our notice. So that is the culture of Pune. And that culture of Pune is because of the knowledge that the Punekars carry with them, the ideas that they have. So that benefits us in many ways because uh, Punekars are able to bring out the best in us. They have ideas that push us to do better. But to manage and handle them, we also have to push up our own understanding knowledge. We cannot go out in the field and work without proper knowledge. So this is altogether a world of social media. A lot of uh, officers, police department or any other officers from the other bureaucrats level. So they, they use social media as a medium to communicate. But we haven't seen much about you, sir. And uh, sir, there is one thing like as a bureaucrat mitigating the people, the addressing the grievance issue is one particular aspect altogether because people are nowadays because of social media and everything have contact numbers, email communications and everything that has been round the corners for you. And there are a lot of expectations from people because the moment they want everything in to be solved in a minute moment. And in this hectic schedule, hectic workload also, you work for a lot of vulnerable groups that are there in society. Uh, be it women's issues like we have seen, malnutrition is another aspect, uh, disabled persons working for their rights and everything, so we would like to know about it. With regard to not being on social media, it's primarily a decision that I took after uh, when I was in college. I I was active on social media and one day decided that I won't be active on social media. So I decided to leave all social media except currently when on WhatsApp which is a job necessary. Um, but my office is on social media. Uh, as Pune Zilla Parishad, we are on social media and I think a very, very active social media. Our social media is based on basically public information. We are basically, so there are different strategies to deal with social media. Our information, our aim is to do public information rather than self-promotion or uh, creating, uh, you know, awareness, running campaigns. We are not into that. We are, we are a little bland, but we provide information. Anybody following our social media would get to know of all the orders that has been issued by Pune Zilla Parishad, the meetings that are being held, the decisions that have been taken, and uh, in a very uh, brief and concise manner, what we are trying to basically achieve 
for the people of Pune uh, district. Uh, this is this is a very important uh, step that uh, we are taking. Uh, with regard to uh, 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 working for uh, vulnerable groups, there are various categories of vulnerable groups in Pune. And uh, as Zilla Parishad, it is our responsibility to reach out to them. Gandhiji in his talisman also said that you have to reach out to the last person in the line. And uh, our our entire strategy and policy in Pune Zilla Parishad, the administrative strategy in Pune Zilla Parishad, is about reaching out to the last person in the line. Uh, we have very good social protection programs uh, in Zilla Parishad, which we are working to uh, implement effectively. We are working towards creating access to our scheme. So uh, our Mahalabharti program that we had undertaken has created access to to reach Zilla Parishad. You don't have to travel three hours to come to Zilla Parishad, but Zilla Parishad will reach to you in in any nook and corner of of this district. And this is something that we are very proud to have. Achieved largely through our Aple Sarkar Seva Kendras, uh, and and our aim is to provide schemes in an effective manner to the person who needs it, and in the time that he needs it. And we are working extremely hard to improve our governance through our efforts in right to services. Zila Parishad, as you know, provides one one eight three eleven hundred eighty three services to the people of Pune. We have mapped all the services. We have notified all the services under Right to Services Act. Information. Uh, we have we have the largest public disclosure programs under the Right to Information Act, uh, where a large amount of our data is actually published on websites. We are one of a, one of the better websites uh, amongst all the uh, rural local bodies in the country, and uh, we have taken all these steps to make Zilla Parishad more accessible, more uh, friendly, and we are also adapting to technology so that we are able to push Zilla Parishad in its diamond jubilee year. To the in the 21st century, we are also celebrating 75 years of India's independence. So these are some steps that we are taking to improve our public uh, delivery in in Zilla Parishad. So we came across one scheme that has been top of the town, and a lot of rural children are more enthusiastic about it. That is M R E G S. So we would like to know about the scheme. So Mahatma Gandhi Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme has been working in Zilla Parishad. We have been implementing the scheme since its onset in 2005. um uh, now in this scheme about 275 types of public uh, uh, individual as well as public works can be undertaken the aim of the scheme is to provide social protection and ensure that uh, that people get employment what we have done in pune zilla parishad that is different is we have taken up schemes that are amongst the 275 promoted certain schemes amongst them which are required by the public of pune these are some schemes like construction of cattle sheds Now Pune has one of the largest milk producing districts in the state of Maharashtra by building cattle sheds by providing shed and shelter to our cattle we can increase milk production by 20 to 30 percent now by we have taken up the scheme we have encouraged people so up to 72000 rupees are being provided to people to build these cattle sheds we have built a large number of these cattle sheds similarly we are building rural godowns in several villages to basically ensure that the post harvest losses are minimized as well as farmers find places to create what is called auxar banks or banks of equipments that are used in farming we are also planning to provide cold storages so that the horticulture and vegetable sector that we have in pune the floriculture sector in pune can thrive by reduction in post harvest losses so all of these schemes are we are taking under mandrega under mandrega we have also taken a mission to increase bamboo production Uh, as you know government of india has come up with a policy for ethanol blending in our fuel bamboo is again a very rich source of ethanol and the uh, bamboo types that are available in pune are especially a rich source of ethanol so what we have uh, hoping to do is we are trying to build this input for bamboo that will ultimately lead to make pune an energy rich because sugar we have 18 sugar factories so all of these sugar factories are also entering into ethanol space similarly our uh, bamboo the western talukas the hilly talukas would also enter into ethanol space that will lead to an increase in uh, availability of ethanol and pune can become a leader in the energy sector in india so this is something that we are hoping to do and all of this is being planned under mandrega and implemented under mandrega we have achieved 121% of our targets and uh, we are pushing ourselves to do more so tackling the rural youth is one particular aspect because the language communication and uh, you come from a uh, altogether different background from karnataka how did you opted to work on this uh, situation in all india services regardless of the state that you come from you are supposed to learn the language of of the particular uh, state that you are working in so in, in my case that is uh, marathi um, i've i've had to pass uh, uh, the class 10 level in marathi like all other officers who are serving here with the grace of god i was able to pass those examinations learn the language and also appreciate the beauty of this wonderful language um and 
spending my entire day talking in marathi in fact i think in a few few years i'll also start thinking in marathi and uh, communication of course in in today's day and age one has to be very very careful about how you communicate what you communicate what you say how you say because sensitivity levels have increased jokes are not taken as jokes uh, one has to also be very particular about the information that is provided so if i say something that is not entirely true that is immediately trolled on social media so uh, one has to be very sure about the facts the communication strategy that we have adapted in pune zilla parishad is primarily that we we should communicate the facts we must communicate effectively for the age group that uh, age appropriate communication so if we are uh, if there is a scheme for the youth it should attract the youth if it is for the older people it should be for senior citizens and so on and so forth so we have come across one thing that is uh, every year annually we celebrate happy new year but you have started something called as happy new year mission what is it so pune zilla parishad has a very large number of employees so if you talk about employees in zp there are about uh, roughly around 35 36000 employees become part of zilla parishad pune uh these are largely teachers there are doctors there are uh, there are clerical staff and so on and so forth 73 cadres of employees so if we talk about employees there are about 18 types of benefits that we give our employees these are these human resource benefits five at the time of retirement some at the time of appointment that is finishing of probation which is called stipend chala uh appointment letters and um, anukampa bharti etc and there are certain services that we give through the service that is uh, ashwasit pragati yojana we give uh, promotions we we give uh, we give some vetan hotis uh, uh, bhasha suit sanganak suit etc so 18 types were identified so what we did was we took it up as a mission to ensure that each employee whatever is his benefit regardless of the fact whether he is applied or not is to be given to him so we took up this as a mission and what we found was all our employees we we, we analyzed that entire cadre we found various services that were pending some people's departmental inquiries were pending because of which they were not getting promoted for years on on end some people had been suspended uh, many years ago but their suspension period were not regularized even after they were found not guilty of the uh, of, of of the allegation that for which they were accused of so we took up this as a mission roughly 3 and a half thousand benefits we could provide between diwali and new year and we had made it a happy new year mission you managed to promote almost everybody except for 194 headmasters because the that is stuck up in uh, in, in some uh, issues at at the state level but apart from that everybody else has gotten the promotion that they they deserve gotten the salary increments that they deserve uh, gotten um, the transfers and all of those benefits has been regularized uh, because of that our employee unions and associations are also uh, uh, quite happy about it and uh, Uh, and we have created a better environment in zilla parish so your journey is being like you know both of your parents were from all together government officers who are renowned in their own names and their efforts are, uh, their names have been taken into consideration as their own patents and everything and you yourself was a former journalist or reporter and an engineering student all your journey is about we have seen that you have worked devoted to the society benefit till you achieve become a bureaucrat so we would like to know about you so my parents have been uh, career bureaucrats they have served in the ias and ips in the state of karnataka and the central government um i have drawn great inspiration from them and their efforts and i got a chance uh, to be a bureaucrat uh, thanks to the upsc uh, selecting me as a bureaucrat and um, Uh, and uh, that has given me an opportunity to serve this wonderful canvas and serving in the zilla parishad which is one of the largest uh, canvas possible you know we provide as i was mentioning 1183 kinds of services 18 departments it is a fantastic opportunity to serve various aspects and core aspects that touch people's lives we reach out to people in 83 types of direct municipal services from from before birth to after death zilla parishad touches lives so heading an organization like this is is uh, a privilege it is a blessing of god even before joining the indian administrative services i was working as a part time reporter i worked as a as an engineer a research engineer i have worked uh, as uh, in, in the managerial positions i worked in the financial sector i have had an opportunity to serve various sectors that are associated with the indian economy and uh, serve the people in whatever different capacities all of these work experience have enriched me helped me understand the various aspects and facets of uh, 
of of how work is to be done each organization comes with its own culture adapting to the culture learning from it growing in it has been a genuine challenge and personally enriching to me and i'm grateful uh, to god for giving me this opportunity to serve the people of this country by now we have come to know as ayush prasad as an administrative officer but as a family man how is ayush sir i think you'd have to ask my uh, parents my wife about and my sister about how i am as a family person uh, i think i'm uh, i'm an average family person i would say that very regular middle class family and very very uh, solidly grounded middle class values we are a very religious uh, and spiritual family uh, we have uh, like any middle class family we have similar aspirations uh, i have been privileged to the fact that my parents have been independent god has been kind to us and i have had a chance to grow in my own life as as the way i wanted but i have i've begun to step up to the responsibility of the family and i'm i'm hoping to continue to grow as a person and i hope to become a better family man um like the serial we see family man on on ott one also uh, is is being in this job you know one does not get much time to actually spend with the family you are very engrossed and even when you are at home you have a lot of responsibilities that you are required to fulfill so uh, i am working towards trying to be a better family person and i hope i i i hope i am able to achieve and to meet all the expectations that are there. so any hobbies you currently if you ask me the only hobby i pursue is like listening to music and play a little bit of sports but uh, previously i was i was doing a lot of other things like photography uh, that is a very uh, big hobby i used I, i was reading a lot uh, which has come down very sadly i've been um, also into a lot of movies i like to write and also play a lot of sports these hobbies are some things that have gone down uh, because of various reasons because one various facilities have been closed and the second is one has become lazier because of you know you spend most of your time in office and tours so whatever time is left pursuing these hobbies become a real challenge but uh, i'm hoping to get back to many of these very soon sir so, uh, for anybody other officials you have worked in godegaon uh, village you have worked you have worked in akula you have served as a pune uh, district collector also and as well as pune jilla parishad that you are heading and other posting in probation period so which was the most interesting all together aspect see all positions come with their own uh, own challenges you know like zila parishads uh, even akola or pune both come with their own challenges goregaon was for tribal development as a subdivision magistrate uh, and uh, i had a small stint as uh, district collector at uh, uh, as in, an in charge district in, uh, interim and in charge district collector so all all jobs have their own challenges it was very enriching very enjoyable but one position that i enjoy the most as i would say is uh, the position of chief, chief executive officer of zila parishad there is zila parishad is a policy making body it is a body with financial powers so you create your own budget it is a poli- it is a body where you head an entire organization and uh, you can really create impact in people's lives you have the liberty you have the powers to actually change people's lives touch people's lives improve people's lives and serve people's lives meet meet expectations if you ask any aspirant for civil services that why do you want to join the civil services pune zila parishad serving at the zila parishad either at akula or at pune it, you get those opportunities to actually fulfill those dreams how much justice you are able to do to those aspirations that you came in as an innocent uh, youngster uh, working towards studying for the upsc and passing that uh, civil services exam that that depends much on luck because you know you may be serving at a position but that position may not have budgets you may be serving at a time that people may be opposed to various developmental initiatives but zila parishad gives you an, an unmatched opportunity to serve the education sector the health sector the women and child development sector the sector for agriculture animal husbandry uh, public infrastructure municipal services like solid waste management liquid waste management all of these things and especially jal jeevan mission uh, fantastically huge uh, water supply schemes so all of these things you get a chance to serve you get a chance to interact with people from all walks of life so i have really enjoyed my stint as uh, a ceo of a zila parishad sir when it comes to ott platforms role of an officer is always seen into a different perspective all together but when you started working and you started few of the initiatives you came up with something called as a fruitfulness to the governance 
So we would like to know, according to you, what is good governance? Sir? See, uh, the kind of work that I do, I don't think it will make it to any movie or OTT platform. There is no stunt <laughs> or glamour to this work, but this is core work which I feel actually creates an impact in people's lives. And and that is something that I keep always questioning myself: is what we are doing is it creating impact in people's lives? It is a boring kind of a work where we are persevering with determination on everyday basis. We're pushing every day. We are having ups and downs. It is it, there's no stunt to this. There's no moment of glory. It is a, a slow, long process of evolution and development. That is what we are primarily doing. But having said that, because you cannot educate people in a day, you cannot um, you cannot improve people's health in a day. You have to look at every minor aspects, right from ensuring there's water in the taps to ensuring that uh, doctors have reached and ensuring that necessary syringes are available to administer those vaccines and things like that. So there is there's generally those little little things that we are working. Through. When we talk about governance, what is good governance is governance that is accessible, governance that uh, is easy uh, to people, and governance is like being uh, is, is like mothering in a way. You don't you don't need to go and tell the mother that you need that you need something from her or food from her or anything like that. The mother just understands. Governance is like that. You should be there when you are needed, and you should you should not be there when you are not needed. You should not be intrusive. You should give the space. You should allow citizens to grow creatively. Uh, 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 do what they want to do, but at the same time, you should be there to protect, uh, protect, guide, uh, and lead, and and that is good governance. So, Pune Zilla Parishad has tried to implement these ideas of good governance. One of those things is uh, implementing two major legislations of good governance: that is, right to services as well as right to information. As I mentioned previously, we have one of the largest public disclosure programs in the in the state. We also large amount of our data is already publicly available. Second thing is we have also notified all the 1183 services provided by Pune Zilla Parishad under the Right to Services Act. This Right to Services Act guarantees that a service will be provided within a stipulated period of time. Just by uh, notifying them does not mean that it can be provided. One of the things is capacity building. We have undertaken a very systematic and universal capacity building programs where people know what work they are supposed to do, when and how they are supposed to do. We have created books, which is called process mapping books, and this has been created by the staff. So, in way of providing, producing those books, they have researched not only the law, not only the GRs, not only the financial rules, not only the circulars, not only the resolutions of uh, uh, Zilla Parishads and the other bodies, but everything come together in their applications. We have created. We are getting into a mode very soon where 100% of our services will be provided on basis of forms. Uh, there would be a time bound this thing that which month of the year we'd be providing which services. So all of these things we have taken under one roof, we created a system and that system we are implementing. Another thing I want to say that we are going to use digitization. So through digitization, we are plan we are hoping to do automation of 621 of these services in which without any human interface, the moment you, up you fill up the data and you say apply, you will get the service. That is real time governance. So we are hoping to achieve all of this. Through, our, uh, through the guidance of the Ministry of Rural Development and Government of Maharashtra and also uh, through an organization called the CSC, MKCL and we are working towards uh, towards achieving this service. Thank you sir, it was a pleasure talking to you. Any last message that you would like to give to any sector of the society that you would like to give? Uh, the message that I'd like to give is please see dreams, have dreams and work hard, toil hard to achieve those dreams. Because the satisfaction that one gets by actually fulfilling a dream, achieving something that you set out to achieve is unmatched. It is a sense of accomplishment that really drives the human endeavor. It, it builds the human civilization. So have dreams, build on those dreams, work hard to achieve those dreams, work smartly to achieve those dreams is what I would like to tell all the people be it from any segment of the society. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving us time in your busy schedule. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you so much for having me.